Yes, so uh, the, the meeting, this meeting will be recorded. Um, so if Bruce would like to view it, it will be available on the city website, um, which will probably, probably be posted today. And there are also, um, there's opportunity for people who weren't able to attend today to um, engage in the, the other forum that's today at one o'clock or tomorrow at, uh, Tomorrow at one o'clock is the community-based organizations forum. So um, you can certainly let people know that those options are available to them as well. All right, thanks for being here, Peter. Uh, Tara? Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tara Jacobson, and I am the Fundraising and Grants Manager at BeFair, Berkshire Families and Individual Resources. Um, we work with folks who have uh, developmental disabilities, autism, and acquired brain injury um, in the Berkshire County area, as well as Pioneer Valley. So just continually looking to serve folks with disabilities. Well, we're happy to have you join us this morning, Tara. Thank you. Uh, Ken Sigler. Singer, Ken Singer. Uh, Singer. <laughs> I'm Ken Singer, uh, President and CEO of Berkshire County Yard. We serve people throughout the Berkshires and Pioneer Valley, uh, people with disabilities and brain injury. We have residential day vocational programs and family support. All right. Glad to have you here, Peter. Uh, I'm sorry, Kenneth. <laughs> Kenneth, I'm sorry. Um, all right, Sonia. Hi, my name is Sonia Stewart. I'm also from Berkshire County Arc. I am the Director of Family Support and Advocacy, so I oversee all of our community supports, um, which supports close to 400 families who have a loved one with either disability, chronic illness, or who is aging. All right. Thank you, Sonia, for being here. And Kamar. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kamar Talaferro, and I am a resident of the city of Pittsfield. Thanks for having me. Glad you can join us, Kamar. Okay, so we're going to get started with the, the presentation of, of how the, the, the city has been putting together the, the plan for um, dis distribution of the American Rescue Plan funding. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so as, as most of you are probably aware, the, the federal government has allocated $65.1 billion of local government direct aid uh, plus an additional $1.8 trillion allocated through other agencies. So for a total of $1.9 trillion. And this prioritizes stabilization of local government operations, households, small businesses, and the economic sectors most impacted by COVID-19. So this funding is really intended to position communities on a path to their specific economic recovery. So the specific funding that has come to the city of Pittsfield is $32.4 million plus an additional $8 million. It's received in two parts um, and we're receiving that 12 months apart. So the city has already uh, received $20 million, has begun some allocations for public infrastructure projects. Um, and you, there is additional information on the City of Pittsfield website to, to see how that initial uh, $20 million is um, um, designated for specific areas in, um, you know, for infrastructure and public health and other human service areas. Um, so as you're probably aware, there are many other potential sources um, through federal and state government in the areas of transportation, education, energy and environmental affairs, health and human services, labor and workforce development, 
housing and economic development, and public safety and security. So um, some organizations may already be pursuing funding through these other buckets of ARPA money um, or waiting to see what the um, distributions are, amounts are that are coming into Pittsfield. Uh, an example is with um, housing assistance um, or, or affordable housing development projects. Um, I know we're, we're waiting to see what additional funds might come through those other um, state government's uh, offices. So, but we're going to, so today we're just specifically talking about the recovery funds that are available um, for public health and other um, economic recovery efforts. Next slide, please. So we are looking at five specific categories um, for the, the funding projects right now. Um, first, responding to COVID-19 public health emergency, um, addressing the negative economic impacts, helping our neighborhoods that are disproportionately impacted. So specifically our Morningside and Westside neighborhoods. Um, we want to offset the loss of local government revenue and using a base uh, um, based on a standard methodology. And we're also making large investments in our water and sewer infrastructure. Next slide. So this is the time frame that we'll be working with for the funding that's available. Um, as I mentioned, we re received half the funding in 2021. Uh, we'll receive uh, the second half in 2022. All of the funds must be obligated by December 31st in 2024, and all funds must be spent by December 31st, 2026. And this is a one-time source of funding. So I mentioned that we're holding the stakeholder uh, forums this week, and these are the three categories uh, that uh, we are working to uh, engage with and to make sure that they have the information necessary uh, to, uh, you know, pursue the, the funding. So first is the childhood and childhood development and youth organizations, including daycare services. So examples of projects that could be funded um, our COVID related upgrades, facility expansions, uh, ex ex program expansions or, or new programs to address the, the current needs uh, that um, have arisen in the last two years um, due to the pandemic. Uh, the, the area of mental health and substance abuse disorders, we had a forum, um, we discussed some of the, the, the staffing needs, the training needs, uh, program expansions, facility upgrades, and expansions. Um, the third group is uh, your category with people. Um, um, with disabilities, the elderly and veterans. Tomorrow we'll be hosting a forum for community based initiatives. Um, in, in that area, we anticipate that there will be funds allocated to increase community navigators in the community. And that could be through public health agencies, um, housing agencies, and other economic development initiatives. But we are hoping that the, the organizations will want to make investments in expanding uh, the community navigator approach to uh, really reach people um, and, and um, assist with, with the challenges that they've been facing. Um, under community-based initiatives, there's capital investments can be made. Um, the funding can be used for increasing access to affordable housing, for example. Um, we're hoping to see projects that will address the social determinants of health and uh, support additional community outreach. And the last forum will be held with our cultural organizations. 
And there we expect that the funding can be used for job training, community-based programming, um, and other COVID-related capital improvements. Next slide, please. So uh, the U.S. Department of Treasury requires that the municipality ensure that all proposals meet the um, eligible expenditure categories. So this is, we're gonna do a screen share with the document from the Department of Treasury. So any proposal has to identify with at least one of these categories. So uh, first is the area of public health. You know, we know that our city health department is going to continue making investments in COVID-19 vaccination and testing and contact tracing. Uh, we also we anticipate that our organizations uh, providing mental health services and substance abuse services will uh, seek funding under one of those expenditure categories. Second is in the area of negative economic in impact. So you'll see um, that programs providing household assistance, whether it's access to food or rent or utility age, uh, aid, excuse me, eviction prevention, those are all areas uh, that are eligible for funding. Um, job training assistance. So if your organization's looking to build capacity, um, adding positions um, to expand your outreach, for example, um, job training assistance could be covered uh, with this funding. Um, so this document, as well as all the information that I'm presenting this morning is already available on this, the city's website. So you can refer to this um, as you're looking um, to, you know, for confirmation to, to where your proposal would fit into an eligible category. Um, but it must meet at least one. It can certainly cover more than one area. The third category is the services to disproportionately impacted communities. Um, so education programs, early learning, academic services, social and emotional and mental health services, um, all eligible for funding under uh, the city's ARPA funds. Healthy childhood development, healthy childhood environments. Um, so I, you know, I'm, we're just quickly um, reviewing this, but you, you can find it on uh, on the ARPA page of the city's website under ARPA investments. Um, and there you'll see where we, we can also, the city is, you know, has already decided to allocate a, a percentage of the funding for um, infrastructure projects, some for revenue replacement, and also in the last category of administration, administrative support, excuse me. All right, so we're going to go back to our slides. So the, um, the mayor um, early on um, when the, the funding first came into the city, uh, she developed a advisory council to assist with the planning and distribution of the ARPA funding. Um, this is nine um, volunteers, members of the community. Um, actually, Kamar, who is attending this forum with us today, he, he has served on the advisory council over the last few months. Um, and this group has really worked hard um, over the course of several months to to set guiding principles, um, what the city really wants to, um, you know, how, what the framework should be 
for making investments with this funding in, for the city of Pittsfield. Um, so we're gonna review what, what they've developed for the guiding principles, as well as the goals and different strategies that we'll be using as we um, work with organizations to develop their, their projects. So when invested in people and places through shared community engagement, the American Rescue Plan provides a once in a lifetime infusion of funds that can transform Pittsfield into a city that, into a city of social and economic resiliency for everyone, especially for people who have been historically underserved, marginalized and adversely affected by racial inequity and generational poverty and where people are able to live up to their greatest potential, achieve prosperity, and experience health, well-being, and joy. To, to uh, achieve that, the following goals have been set. We're looking for projects that strive towards ensuring city residents have a comfortable, safe, and dignified place to call home. Projects that create create safe and healthy neighborhoods supported by quality infrastructure, access to affordable childcare and opportunities for job training and financial security. Projects enhancing community access to public health, mental and behavioral health and youth services. Initiatives that, that strengthening and engage community partners to increase community access to services, housing resources and economic opportunities. Initiatives supporting creativity and the expression of culture and artistic excellence so that everyone has access to the arts and an opportunity for self-expression. And projects that build the power and voice of lower income people and people of color so that all residents share in the future of our community. And these are the specific investment strategies. We uh, want to prioritize investments serving historically underserved residents and support entrepreneurs and small businesses with an emphasis on businesses owned by people of color and immigrants and those that are located in Morningside, Westside and downtown Pittsfield. Uh, we also are aiming for strategies that support community initiatives and leadership and improve the city's public infrastructure and that are transformational and or enhance our resiliency as a community. So there will be an evaluation process um, and, and criteria of for to, to really establish um, a, a priority process uh, when when the applications are received. Um, so applications will be weighted using this specific evaluation criteria um, because these are the areas that will really help to achieve the, the goals for the, the investments for, for the city. So we're, we're aiming to have applic applicants that are located in or services the Morningside and Westside neighborhoods or is led by or primarily serves people of color, immigrants, the disabled or veterans. Um, Applications that foster partnerships and collaborations will be more competitive. Also looking that, that the projects target investments in or to residents of the Morningside West Side and or downtown Pittsfield, including people of color and immigrants. Also those projects that address a physical or social determinant of health um, it, that it can be achieved with this one-time investment or can reasonably be expected to be financially sustainable at the end of the funding period. Um, 
projects will also score higher if they bring a new component to an existing program or introduces a new approach to addressing an identified community need and addresses a need that is supported by community-based data and or community engagement. Um, and also um, there will be um, um, there will, it'll be weighted um, if it addresses an, an identified and documented systemic gap or flow in existing policies, programming or program delivery to target underlying inequities. Um, so as I mentioned, we're, we're going to conclude our five forums with community organizations this week. Um, and we will continue to provide updates on the City of Pittsfield's webpage. Uh, we are anticipating that the invitation for funding proposals will be released in early January. So you can expect to receive an email uh, notifying our organizations of the release date of the application and that will become available on the city's website. And we will begin accepting applications 30 days after the release date of the invitations. And you know, we, we understand that people have been, our, our community representatives have been eager to see uh, what the, 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 the utilization plan is for the city. Um, and you're working on developing your ideas and your programs. And now that you have this information, it you know, may, may take some time to you know, establish those collaborations, um, seeing where you know, the, the funds will be uh, of greatest impact within your organizations and within your networks. Um, so we, this will be a rolling application process. So there is no deadline. Uh, where you feel like you have to, um, you know, really, you know, expedite, you know, to the point of, of, of not fitting in all the strategies that you, you um, really feel are necessary. Um, there, it is a rolling application process, so it can be submitted at any time to, to the city. And we also understand that there's there's great need out there, and there is a, a real sense of urgency to uh, support our our families and our households in in so many different ways um, because of the pandemic. So we we are really aiming to um, expedite the the review process when we receive them, and decisions um, should be made within 30 to 45 days after submittal. All right, so now I'd like to open it up uh, and have discussion on ongoing pandemic uh, challenges that you've uh, been facing um, and some, maybe some of the identified needs. Any um, questions, uh, input, suggestions to the information that you received this morning um, is really helpful in uh, helping our investment team uh, you know, put together the the application process and um, to continue our, our conversation with you that, that supports your efforts. My, oh, sorry, Kamar has his hand up, sorry. Yeah, I just have a quick comment. Um, Gina did mention that I'm a member of the ARPA Advisory Council, but I just wanna say like, I am here as a, as a resident of Pittsfield, as someone who was raised by their grandparents um, as like a stakeholder. Um, and my understanding is that members of the advisory council will not be reviewing individual proposals. So like, I don't want my presence to um, like douse or quiet any conversation. Well, my, my first thought was, thank you uh, first and foremost um, for inviting Soldier on and, um, and the the materials that you provided, it would be great if, if they're available, if that slide deck is available so that I could share it with others in the organization uh, to get them 
the wheels turning a little bit and get that stakeholder feedback from the veteran community um, would be great. Uh, and then, of course, I know the website, your website has a lot of this information, but that, that would be great to uh, get some of that information. And, you know, I think very broadly for veteran, uh, like so many uh, across the country, you know, it's the, the income loss and job loss and rent payment that has been most acutely, you know, uh, impactful. And there were some programs from the CARES Act and others that really made a huge difference in allowing uh, veterans and others to pay rent uh, to keep both landlords and everybody kind of above water or at least, you know, close to above water. And so, you know, the, the, this, the, you know, these funds, whether they, you know, can help with some of that as that continues, uh, but more importantly, to kind of get more capital into housing uh, is, is really critical. That's what I'd say. Mm -hmm. Those are um, the comments that were, were echoed yesterday um, in, in our, um, second forum for childhood development and youth interventions. The, 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 the needs for housing are, are just so great in, on many levels. The, the other point that came across in my role as a development consultant, I worked with uh, childcare centers to build a new facility and the honest to God insanity of how expensive it is to provide daycare services. This is not a veterans thing. This is a real just issue. And the fact that, you know, daycare providers have trouble finding and paying staff, have trouble in paying for their rent, and yet it costs so much for people to have their kids in childcare. This is just a, a huge crisis. And to the degree that ARPA funds can help alleviate some of that I think is just critical. Hi, I just wanna um, echo what Peter said about um, thanking you for the presentation. I, I definitely think it, it is something to noodle on and, and we'll definitely be thinking it over here at Be Fair. And also to just share as well as with the staffing crisis, I think we're really feeling it in terms of direct care professionals. And um, that is something that I know that the organization has faced before the pandemic, but has really been highlighted um, now over the last two years and really thinking through how these funds can really kind of offset the strain and, and really get some you know, good folks working with individuals with disabilities. And then the only other thing I wanted to share about challenges that we have seen um, with individuals with disabilities is really the connection piece um, for a population that is already isolated, having the opportunity to build social, emo emotional, mental health skills, both within the community of Be Fair, but also outside um, has been really challenging. So since COVID uh, restrictions have lightened up, our programs have been really creative, but I know that that is something that is top of mind as well, because um, that connection piece, I mean, I'm sure we can all share has been really hard um, and it certainly has for the individuals that we're working with, so. Yeah. And it, you, you use the word uh, creative. Um, and I think that's, that's another um, sentiment that we've been hearing is people are really finding that the only way out of this is to really look at some creative solutions, creative partnerships, you know, maybe building um, new, new programming in, in partnership with organizations that we haven't traditionally looked at. And so this is an amazing opportunity and it's actually you know, exciting to, to hear the, the ideas of how um, organizations are coming together to, in creative ways to meet those needs. 
And Deanna has joined us. Deanna Rufer is here. Uh, perfect timing. We just started our discussion, Deanna. As, as I mentioned, she um, is on the ARPA investment team as one of the special projects managers. All right. Um, any oh, other yeah. questions? Well, this is quite a big challenge you're throwing out at uh, this community. And it's tr tremendous. It's wonderful. Uh, and I'm going to speak about two different things. One is our agency, but I also have some notes here that I got from a woman who lives in town and is in a wheelchair. And I called her to ask her what she thinks she input I'd like to share. So I'll share that with you in a few minutes. But from our agency standpoint, I think that clearly the, the number one issue is the workforce. Uh, and I think, you know, there's a lack of bodies in, in the Berkshires and in Pittsfield, you know, and we, I don't know, money throwing at it doesn't seem to be the answer. We've raised our salaries 21% since January and it hasn't made that great an impact. Uh, so it's gotta be some way to recruit young people and people into this community to stay in this community. I know everyone's heard that before a million times, but it's a huge issue going forward for human services uh, to keep our programs going. Uh, and it's a real challenge. We, we the, the pandemic has been really hard on us. We, right now we have, I think, five houses under quarantine. Um, and we've had a number of many staff come in positive. And we have a real issue with our day programs. The state will pay for us to test our residential staff, but not our day program staff. So we have day programs throughout Pittsfield. And those staff are not getting tested, paid for by the state. So funding for that would be very helpful, I think, uh, as a preventative. We just made a decision to mandate vaccines by the end of January for our staff, uh, which was a major decision. Uh, but we really need the people to be tested uh, ongoing. So that, that's definitely an issue. Um, transportation. The disabled is a real huge issue, gigantic. There's no transportation in the evenings and on holidays. And I mean, you know, people are really limited in their lives in terms of being involved in this community because of transportation. So I think that would be something that the city could invest in that would really help people with disabilities. Uh, Sonia, you can jump in any time if you want. Uh, just um, other things, but go ahead. Why don't you do a little, and then I'll come back. Yeah, working with some of the families with younger kids. I know you spoke a lot about childcare, but early intervention has gotten harder to access because you know there's barriers to people coming out to people's homes and doing assessments. Waiting lists for ABA services are really, really long. Um, <clears throat> we're getting. We do a lot of ed advocacy and parent consultations. Every day we're getting calls about kids getting suspended, second graders, nine-year-olds, you know, crazy multiple manifestations meetings in a week. And um, the behaviors are through the roof and the parents are just looking for support because they're having to quit their jobs to provide care for these kids who are now at home because they haven't been able to re-enter into the classroom. So there's, there's a lot of moving parts here. So um, any way we can support these little pockets of, of things is great. But again, like Ken said, finding the staff to do it is going to be a big barrier. So the more we can draw people to the Berkshires, the better. It's definitely an issue, for sure. Uh, let, let me just read this list for you, because I think it'll be helpful, because we, we made a quick call to uh, this woman who lives downtown uh, on Third Street, I think, or one of the, the apartment buildings over there in a wheelchair. And I said, I think it would be helpful to the committee of the city to hear from a citizen in a wheelchair who lives downtown and what, what their needs are. And we made a simple call and I have a whole long list that they provided me in about 10 minutes. So I think it might be helpful if I just read it to you. Uh, Absolutely. Okay, accelerate the city's ADA plan including to make the library more accessible and increase curb cuts. Uh, 
let's see. Uh, promote people becoming licensed therapists as Brin Center has a six month waiting period. Uh, maybe educational initiatives to offer vouchers to BCC or MCLA. The homeless initiative, the common is used in the summer as a hangout place, but needs uh, are often left on the ground. Uh, Oh, needles are often left on the ground. Maybe create a drop-in center for the homeless during the daytime. Transportation always a problem. Uh, no longer transportation people with disabilities on holidays and Sundays, partly because of workforce crisis. Increased dial of friend services. Uh, there are a few places for people to congregate, leading to social isol isolation. So those just just in five minutes what, they, what this one woman came up with. And I thought it would be helpful to, to share that because they're very specific things that they feel they Absolutely. need. Absolutely. in a wheelchair, she's independent yeah. in a wheelchair. She lives on her own, but her life is very limited because of it. So I thought that would be helpful. Yeah, it's interesting. The <clears throat> Those of us who, have wor who are working kind of in administrative <clears throat> and leadership serving people uh, like that woman, while we can be their advocate, sometimes straight from the mouth, because it's so easy to get lost in all of our day jobs, that you almost lose the like mm -hmm. day in and day out issues, you know, curb cuts. And I mean that the, yeah, I mean, ADA uh, Im improvements and in infrastructure you know, we, it's almost mind boggling that the whole act was only in the 90s that we finally got to it. And we're still way behind, you know, as far as making uh, life easier for folks in wheelchairs, so. That's true. <laughs> I like the um, stuff that Kenneth has shared in speaking with um, my grandmother, who is part of a group that's called Grandparents Raising Grandchildren. Um, it was something that I kind of grew up in. Um, she, she sort of said very similar things is that transportation is really, really difficult. Um, her choice on where to live is really constrained because she's on a fixed income. Um, and many of the other ladies in the group are on fixed incomes as well. Um, but mostly, you know, they, cause I got a chance to sit down and chat with them. Um, it's been a while since I got to sit with everyone and, um, you know, they said they feel just a little bit forgotten. They used to meet on North Street um, at the senior center. Um, and, you know, for whatever reason, they're not there anymore. Um, and then they got to meet at 18 degrees. And it wasn't a great fit because they didn't really want to be mentors to younger women. They were looking for support themselves. They were looking for that companionship um, and, you know, just what comes from having similar experiences. Um, with one another. Um, and the other thing that they were really concerned about was um, they knew a lot of other grandparents in the community um, who were raising grandchildren. And, you know, they said distinctly because parents were struggling with opioid addiction. Um, and they were concerned that those grandparents did not have access to the same supports as they did. Um, you know, the, the waiting list for Section 8 takes like eight years. Well, that may be a little bit of an exaggeration, but it takes a really long time to get into housing. Um, and there have been some instances of like food stamps, um, benefits going up and down and um, not really like taking into consideration um, how little food stamps provides, right? Um, so those, those kind of issues of like, where do they fit in the community? And as our elders, um, you know, how do we care for them um, after they have spent so much care for us? We're, we're huge on their mind. Um, and so I would say housing was the first one. Transportation is the second one. And it, then what's kind of hard to hear is like food security. Like that's a, that's a crappy thought. Um, but for some, it's difficult to get to the food pantries um, that we have in Pittsfield. Well, our agency has two community-based day service programs uh, in the city of Pittsfield, uh, and as well as a, a, a day rehabilitation program. So we have three programs, and, and we have a large vocational program where people work. Well, if 
because of the pandemic, many of the people have not been able to go back to work because we don't have the staff to do it because it takes it, it's much more intensive when you have someone working on a job in the community to give them the supports. So we're looking to open another community-based day program in Pittsfield to try and service some of those people so they're not sitting at home. Uh, and that's one of the things we're going to look for support from possibly. Uh, we need to serve these people. They're out there and they need the services. And it's really been tough with the pandemic. The pandemic doesn't seem to be getting better. It seems to be getting worse. You know, we were doing very well. And all of a sudden, we've had a real spike. Uh, and many of our staff have come back positive. Uh, we uh, have we didn't have one of the individuals we serve. Our agency has 43 group homes. And we didn't have a case since a year ago, May. And now we've had four individuals we serve I'm talking about I'm not talking about staff we've had a number of staff so it's uh, it's definitely on the rise and our, our we've had to close a day program uh two weeks ago right before Thanksgiving for a week because there was an outbreak uh and we closed it down and you know so we're looking we're looking for some support we haven't received any support from the city of Pittsfield around COVID even though we applied so hopefully this round maybe we will <clears throat> Well, you know, you're, the the project idea of um, expanding uh, an, or another uh, day program, support program, um, you know, that helps to address so many different needs that uh, your your clients and your residents are facing, you know, the, the isolation and, you know, just furthering access to, to social and um, human services supports and things. And you know, so that's absolutely, you know, that falls into one of the eligibility criteria. But yeah, the bottom line though is always, it's that staffing piece. So, you know, I, I hear you yeah. loud and clear about the, the needs for, the need for, um, you know, recruitment. You know, how do we, how do we bring people in to really, um, to, to meet the demands on the work for the workforce, yeah. And I, I do want to correct myself, my guys, so we didn't receive any support. I was talking about financial support. We see, received mm -hmm. tremendous support from you, Gina, and from the health department uh, around all of our cases that we had in, in the beginning, particularly, but even ongoing, the, the uh, Board of Health in Pittsfield has been tremendous in working with us and dealing with and helping us to make decisions about staff coming back, staff staying home, and what we should be doing and isolating. And so you guys have been fantastic. So I want to, I do want to say that. <laughs> Thank you. It, it, it's a huge team effort and you certainly have, have had your, you've had challenges for months and months and um, yep. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue to work together. We cried when you left, but I'm sure it's gone on very well. <laughs> 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 yeah. She was, yeah, that's which is great. Yeah, yeah. Which is I know. Really I, yeah, yeah. That, right. But she was a great help to us, though. I can't, I can't say enough for how much she helped us. We were learning. We were the first agency in the state that I know of, and I'm a pretty involved statewide, to have COVID cases. And we were really floundering. What do we do? How do we handle it? And also, we had an outbreak in all these houses. We had like 18, 19 houses that were quarantined. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were great in helping us. That was, yeah, that was, that was, that was a rough, that was a rough period. But we all, we all got through it together. Yes, we did. Um, I just wanted to share one thing that Kamar had said that really resonates, I think, with one of our programs. So for our family and the individual support program, I know that they have shared that finding a place to live on a fixed income is really challenging. And I think it opens up all the ADA things that Ken was sharing about with the woman who he spoke with. And I just think that having more options that are more accessible to the community and would just really help certain areas because as, as he said, it is really constrained when you just have a fixed income um, and need to focus on that. So. Well, this uh, round of um, stakeholder meetings is not focusing on housing specifically, but as you are pointing out, it, um, it, 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 it permeates every aspect of life. Um, 
and, and the invitations that we will issue in January will not be focusing on housing. Um, a significant amount of, of um, our effort outside of this invitation round um, is looking at how we can help accelerate and expedite the creation of more affordable housing. How, how, who's going to determine the funding? How is is there a committee, or how does that? Who is actually going to be doling out these this money? So, um, Gina, probably let you know that the investment guidelines have now been posted on the ARPA webpage, and that goes through the um, what Gina presented to you, as well as the evaluation criteria, um, and there is likely, we're still working out the details. Um, while the mayor is the ultimate decision maker by, by federal um, uh, legislation, um, it is likely that we will have a, a, a team of reviewers um, and uh, we will be using a weighted criteria, evaluation criteria. Um, and what we've provided in the investment guidelines is our, um, our goals at this point in time uh, for the uh, split of the first 20 million amongst the different categories of, um, of, of qualified activities. Um, and so we are, we, we wanna foster, as I'm sure Gina said, the creativity and, and provide as much flexibility so that the true needs, so you can think outside of the box. You don't have to try to, um, uh, put your needs inside something we've predetermined. We're trying not to do that. Um, uh, and um, as a result, we are not establishing a per application um, limit uh, or a maximum funding amount or a maximum funding amount in any one category. But you will see some um, general goals within uh, the categories of, of eligible activities that uh, Treasury has provided. Now, if you want 20 million, I would say it's unlikely. We will work hard to um, serve as much of the community as possible. Um, and um, I'm known to have said um, a few months ago uh, when this first was announced, um, it was amazing the number of people that just were sure their needs were, and I'm sure their needs were um, significant enough that if we just give them 10%, um, and um, we would have needed about 400% more money than we have um, in order to even be able to start to satisfy those. So, so we're, we're doing a balancing act and we're asking for your partnership in identifying the, the area that can make the most difference um, at this point in time um, and, um, and, and uh, serves the most vulnerable in our community and fosters um, sustainability in the long run. Um, so, because it is only a one-time or, or as a one-time investment. Um, uh, so you'll see that in those investment guidelines. There's, there's some themes that run throughout it. It's a very exciting opportunity yeah. though, Deanna, for the city and it's, it's great and it's great. And I, I appreciate your, your commitment. I, I see a number of your staff here uh, this morning and I appreciate the commitment to working with us and finding a way to reach those that um, um, have not had the best opportunity at, as of this point to um, recover from the pandemic. And while we're, as you said, we're still in the middle of it. And I would hope the Disability Commission would have some input too, uh, you know, to you, they're not here, but, but you know, hopefully that would be a good uh, resource because they, you know, they hopefully have their hands on, on things. We did do, give some invites there and we may want to do some extra reaching out, um, recognizing some of the constraints. Um, we want to get the money out as quickly as possible, but we recognize everybody's really busy and it might not be the best time of year, uh, but is there ever the best time of year? Uh, best time of the year? Uh, well, there's a lot of needs that everyone thinks this is the most important, but so it's a big challenge, I know. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, the homeless well, one, I, I, I think the homeless issue is something that every, is on everyone's mind in Pittsburgh because it's increased so much. 
Yeah, and I think that's something that we will uh, be addressing outside of this invitation. Um, uh, it, it's more about how, is there a new program that you could put in place or are there existing programs that uh, need, have not been able to come back in the way you wanted them to come back? Um, so please look at that investment guidelines um, and uh, just uh, Kamara, I don't know if you had already identified that Kamara is one of, of um, uh, nine uh, individuals who are on the mayor's advisory council. So they've been very involved with us in um, developing a, a, an equitable um, framework for these funds and with, with the goal of getting it to the people who are, sometimes get missed. You know, one, one of the things that I, you know, we have run into in, over the years are people, uh, and there are some funds, but they're really limited, people who live in their own homes and have a, a child with a disability, uh, you know, Sonia could probably talk more about that as head of our family support department, but need help in making their houses more accessible. And we have really run into walls over the years uh, helping people do that. Uh, because it can be very expensive with bathrooms and ramps and whatever. And I think that would be something that might be helpful to families in the community. Not yeah, so most, most state funding doesn't cover home modification. So you see families turning dining rooms into bedrooms because they can't, you know, help their loved one up the stairs or, you know, the doorways aren't wide enough for their wheelchairs to go through. <clears throat> and, you know, ramps off the front, they end up with temporary ramps that are kind of like hob job to make it work. It's really difficult. Are you all aware I, um, that there is an existing program that's been yeah. uh, for accessibility improvements? Yeah, there it's is, called, but it doesn't seem to uh, yeah. have enough funding to get it done. Really you know, that, but that, that's a good point. It's the uh, Mass Rehab Commission, MRC provides that, and it can do exactly what you're looking for. So yeah, it might be just a funding uh, matter or a, a, a get out the dollars matter, like an admin thing. So that's, a per, that's another great... Uh, kind of already existing <clears throat> program that it's could really get... limited honestly yeah. I'm, I'm right. very familiar, yeah, very no, familiar I, with I, mrc I'm... and and what their funding is and limited, i've had yeah. families i can think of a family a woman who was was unfortunately the person passed away but was been, for years and years was carrying their mm -hmm. son to the bathroom and doing it right. because they couldn't afford it and we tried to assist them financially and the state yeah. really didn't or if they rent, we run into a lot of roadblocks if somebody doesn't own their home, oh, and the, yeah. then it goes to the landlord, and then the landlord does this back and forth. There's there's a lot of roadblocks you can run into. No, it's a good point. I have to leave for another meeting, but thank you for inviting me for, again, Soldier On will be a part of the dialogue for sure. Okay? All okay, right. wonderful. Oh, Peter, oh, yeah. Peter, yeah. before you go. Um, so the rather than having the slide deck available on the website, the the exact information is presented there, but in a different format. Okay, great. So same information, it just looks differently. Okay. All right. Thanks. All so right. Much. Thank you All so right. much for being here. Yeah. Bye. -bye. And I don't, Gina, did you go through um, uh, the other sources that have alpha money? Yes. Okay. Not not in great detail. Just, just that first, the the first couple slides. Okay, uh, there are a lot of other agencies, state level and federal level, who have access or who have been allocated uh, a lot more ARPA money than local governments have. Um, and um, uh, I'm sure, Ken, you're watching the state. Oh yeah, we're we're well aware of them, and we are receiving some funds from that. So yeah, okay, but um. um Please reach out to um, Annie Harvinder or Justine Dodds if you haven't over time as to whether the challenges with our accessibility program. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I think right now what's mo most of my mind is getting support on testing and stuff. I think that that's just a huge issue for us. You know, uh, we're, we're testing our residential people in all our homes, which is a lot of people. But we also have a lot of day program staff, uh, and we so you, you're sort of kicking yourself in the foot when you're, people are going to the day program during the day, and you're not they're not being as uh, protected or whatever. So, and now that we're mandating, it's going to make you know we may lose staff as a result. You know, so it, that makes it even 
more difficult, but we came to that tough conclusion after a lot of painful discussion uh, that to protect the people we serve, that's the best thing for us to do. That's what we decided, so. And um, I'm gonna check and make sure that you're on a list that we have um, just provided to the Department of Health. Um, uh, the state is um, distributing, as you may have read, um, testing. Uh, yeah, we're very testing. interested in that. In that. Okay, um, uh, the Department of Health has been, um, we will really receive, I think it's like 11,000 as a city. Um, and so the Department of Health is putting together a list of who we want to get those out to um, as quickly as possible. And if you haven't received that call in the last uh, couple of days, um, I'll make sure your, your agency is listed on that. It would be whoever is the point of contact for the human service funding. I'm sorry. Uh I, I, I lost you for a second. My phone rang. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah, hear the I think, uh, uh, you received some of our human service funding each year. No, we actually don't get any city funding. Okay. All right. I'm going to make sure you're on that list. I would appreciate that. That would be a huge trouble. You know, obviously we've been reading about it and I don't know how they're going to get distributed. And so you, we, the city's getting 11,000. That's pretty good. So that's good. It's going to go fast. Oh, okay. it is. It is. It would help us even a little piece of that for a part of to, to it would be and helpful. If, if you wanted to, um, the new director, Andy Camby, is managing that. Um, and uh, it's A-C-A-M-B-I at cityofpittsfield.org. Now, A-C-M-B-I. At cityofpittsfield.org. And, and is, is that the new Gina? That's the new Gina. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Caroline uh, Eldred from our department has been working with her as Gina knows her. So I will tell her to talk to her. Talk uh, to Andy. Because we've, because we've had so many positive cases, we've been talking to her on a regular basis. I think. Yeah, yeah. just uh, make yeah. sure you let them know your level of interest in having those testing kits. But uh, I will as well. That would be great. Thank you so much. That would be a huge help. Huge. Great. Because Chris wants to say something, I think. Chris? He lit up for a second. I don't know. What he did. <laughs> Let's see. Is Chris? Chris, can you hear us? I know he's lit. He's there, but I don't. He, I don't know. Maybe he's muted. Yeah. He had trouble yesterday. We were on a call with him yesterday and he had trouble getting being heard. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> yeah. I think he's having trouble. Um, in the meantime, Ken, I just, I wanted to also thank you for um, bringing the, the voice of, of one of our residents to, to this meeting. Um, I, you know, that's really important input to receive and i woke um, up this morning and i thought about it and i said you know she's she knows she she has a lot she's very outspoken you probably know her i don't want to mention her name i don't want to do that to her but uh and so in one call she, she gave me that list in about five minutes so it's on her mind <laughs> it's like and i i knew it would be helpful i just felt like this committee should know that should hear that you guys mm -hmm. should hear what she has yes Yes. So, that's good. No, my pleasure to do that. Anyway, we can be of helpful. Or we're more than happy to. Uh, our agency will be happy to do anything we can. It's not just about our agency. You know, this is about all of us. About be fair about everybody. You know, we're all doing the same stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. and so that's right. If you have any questions after reading the um, investment guidelines or <clears> if, um, the terminology even is questionable to you or uh, why a criteria is important or that, please feel free to use the um, uh, email we've established of arpa at cityofpittsfield.org um, and either Gina or I will get back to you. Um, and Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Good luck. <laughs> we look forward to seeing what comes from it all. Yeah, yes. you, got your, you got a project in front of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we look forward yeah. to seeing your proposals. But
But it's all good. It's yes, always good do. giving out money, right? So it's, yeah. it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, all right. Uh, so, Chris, I just want to give Chris one more opportunity here if he can hear us can or chat, maybe? unmute. Let's check the chat. I don't know if it's. Oh, I don't see there is a chat. Oh, here we... mm -hmm. oh, the chat's not open, so he couldn't put it. The no, there's a, there is a Q and A. Okay. Nothing in the Q and A. <clears throat> okay. So Chris might be having some technical issues. I can follow up with him, um, and maybe encourage him to attend uh, the the forum tomorrow. Yeah. All right. So I think at this point we'll we'll close the meeting. Thank you all. all. Right. Thank you. It. Thank bye -bye. you all very Thank much. You. We'll be in touch. Take bye care. Bye bye. bye, -bye.